welcome to Rome. I'm going to show you that with a little planning, you can hit up all the major sites and the Vatican in just 48 hours. This is the start of my two weeks in Italy. Over the next few episodes, I'll be sharing with you Rome, Venice, Florence, Tuscany, Sorrento, Positano, and Capri. If you like to travel and are into photography, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. We actually arrived yesterday. From the airport, you can take the Leonardo Express, taxi, Uber, or in our case, a private driver to get you to your hotel. We arrived a day early deliberately. Despite getting treated to business class on Swiss Airlines, we decided that an early evening would be best. After stretching our legs and dinner in Trastevere, we are ready to start our 48 hours in Rome. One of my secrets to making this work is to get skip the line tickets. And I'm glad we did because in the four visits I've now had to Rome, this is the busiest that I've ever seen this place. We have very early tickets at the Colosseum, so we're heading out even earlier to beat both the heat and the crowds at some of the other sites. We are traveling by foot from our hotel in Trastevere to the Spanish Steps. Along the way, we're going to be stopping at Piazza Novana and home to the nearly 400-year-old fountain of the Four Rivers. <laughs> the Spanish Steps were originally built to link the church at the bottom with the Spanish Embassy to the Holy See at the top. There are 135 steps with three terraces representing the Holy Trinity. The next stop will be the famous Trevi Fountain. The earlier you get here, the better. The crowds pick up quickly and stay well into the night. After the quick Instagram shots for my companions, we continue to make our way to the old city of Rome and our early morning reservation at the Colosseum. We pass the Roman Forum, but don't worry, our tickets will also get us here. You'll find the ticket booth outside of the Colosseum, close to the Arch of Constantine. We got here a little bit earlier than when we had planned, so that gave us an opportunity to enjoy a little cafe. Even though we had skipped the line tickets, this place was busy. You can pay for a general entry and be able to walk around the circumference of the Colosseum, or do what we did. We paid a bit extra to be able to stand in the footsteps of the gladiators. It's like a gladiator. We're now walking on the floor of the Colosseum. Truth be told, not really something that I would do again. For another fee, you can also tour the underground part of the structure. It's hard to believe that this building was completed in 80 AD. Just know these steps are a little steep. Inside, I found the building have some photographic draw to it, but people were always in my image. After the conclusion of this Exploring Italy series, I'll show you how I was able to take this snapshot without a tripod with people actually in the image. Next up, the Palatine Hill. Just leave the Colosseum and walk past the Arch of Constantine. You'll find the entrance to the right a few hundred feet past the arch. So this is a new one for me. We're at the Roman Foreman Forum in Palatine Hill, things how you call it. Also, my wife has the camera, so she's the photographer today. Built on one of the seven hills of Rome, this was an upscale part of the city with several palaces. Even before the empire, this place was inhabited as early as 900 BC. If you dare to brave the heat and crowds, you'll be able to climb to the top of the hill for a commanding view of the Roman Forum. This was the center of Rome. It is also visited by 4.5 million visitors each year, 
many of whom decided to join us today. After a light lunch of Caprese and pizza, we are on to the Pantheon. At nearly two centuries old, this 142 foot high dome is still the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world. The central oculus is open to the sky and provides the lighting within. It has served as a church since 609 AD. From a photographer's perspective, my interest was drawn to the light coming in from the oculus and the reflected light on the Christian sculptures on the walls. After many miles and being well baked in heat, we are retreating to an older part of Rome where the buildings are close enough together to provide us with some shade and nourishment. All right, crema and white sauce. Oh, that's good. Come on here. It's real good. After our daily gelato, we are actually calling it quits for the day. Giving in to our jet lag and full bellies, we're going back for a nap and emerging only for dinner. After a bit of rest at the hotel from the heat and the miles of walking, it's time for dinner. We're roaming around Trestevere looking for some good local food. We're starting off with a little sampling of a mozzarella stick just to see how it compares to the American version. It was very good. This evening, I'm trying cacio e pepe, which is a pasta in a sauce of unsalted butter, cracked black pepper, and grated Parmesan and pecorino cheese. The taste, dreamy. The Trestevere area comes to life in the evenings with street performers and many places to eat. Once the home of Julius Caesar, this maze of medieval streets are as full of trattorias and pizzerias as the walls are enriched by street art. More gelato. Looks like I went today. Of course, we wanted to try the local gelato before heading for bed. It is now day two of our Roman adventure. Once again, we are heading off to a very early start to beat the heat and the hordes of tourists that we are expecting today. We're going to be spending the day in the smallest country in the world, Vatican City. Our first stop is St. Peter's Basilica, right when the doors open. Finished in 1626, this Renaissance masterpiece is built on top of the tomb of St. Peter. As a matter of fact, you'll find a lot of popes entombed in the main sanctuary as well as in the catacombs below. Look up from time to time, the frescoes on the many small domes as well as the Baroque architecture with its ornate symmetry lends itself to some amazing images. The massive scale of this place truly humbles you and makes you feel as if you're a small child walking through the home of God. The many altars also offer some impressive photographic opportunities. All are of course welcome here. I even saw a pair of Buddhist monks paying a visit. For entry into the Vatican Museum, we purchased Skip the Line tickets a month before our trip. We opted to purchase the tickets without a tour so we could enjoy the museum at our own pace. As you can see, without the Skip the Line ticket, you're going to have a long wait to get in. The first surprise inside the museum were the Egyptian artifacts. We weren't expecting that. Complete with sarcophaguses and mummies, the collection was vast with some of the pieces dating over 5,000 years old. The museum is absolutely full, wall to wall, with busts, statues, elaborate ceilings, artifacts, tapestries, 
and hordes of people. Two big problems that we face during this very busy time of travel in Italy is the number of people and the number of tour groups. The large flow of people through the museum made enjoying the individual pieces nearly impossible as people were moving as fast as they could to get to the Sistine Chapel. One thing is for certain, artists of today cannot match the artists of yesterday. The abstract art that we see created in modern times looks like a poor excuse when compared to the century-old works of art. At the end of these long halls is the Sistine Chapel. The Vatican has requested that there not be any still or video footage taken in the chapel, so if you want to see it, you need to come here and experience it for yourself. Once outside, we are once again greeted by the heat of a Roman summer, and we begin our trek to our next stop. Castel Sant'Angelo. This formidable landmark has had many uses throughout its nearly 2,000 year old history. It was a mausoleum, a military fortress, a castle for the popes, a prison, and now a museum. The winding, multi-perimetered architecture lets even the average civilian know about the military past of this fortress. Once inside the outer ramparts, raiding armies would have to fight all the way around to the back just to enter the next perimeter in the complex. Once inside, you have to climb a very long spiral ramp with several opportunities for the defenders to ambush you. We even had to cross a steep bridge and staircase that would serve as a last line of defense before getting to the apartment for the Pope. During a siege, the Pope had some comfortable quarters. Continuing on up, we are treated some great views of the Tiber River and St. Peter's Basilica in the distance. I am just blown away by how many large rooms are up here. From the street below, the sheer size of this place is not evident. Just be ready to climb lots of stairs to get to the top where you can see the bronze statue of the Archangel Michael. Legend has it that he appeared atop the castle and sheathed his sword as a sign of the end of the plague of 590. We also notice that one of the busts appears to be that of Lord Voldemort from the Harry Potter books. I guess time and the elements were not kind to this statue. Back on the streets of Trastevere, we need some shade from the sun and more nourishment. I'm going to try a drink that I've seen everywhere. I thought it was an apple spritz, you know, something cool, sweet, refreshing on a hot summer day. It is actually an aperero spritz, cold, but bitter. Not what I was expecting. That's something. That's different. I can try that. Try that. A caprese salad, along with some rigatoni and a tomato ragu, helped to make up for the shockingly disappointing taste of the drink. One thing that I had to do to help make sure that I enjoyed the rest of this trip. I had to. I'm getting a little sunburn on the top. It's evening now, and I'm going to sign off and enjoy this stroll with my wife. There you have it. We hit the major sites of Rome in just 48 hours. There is a lot more to see here, and if you feel that I left something important out, let me know in the comments below. The two best things that we did for ourselves on this trip was to get up very early and get the skip the line tickets for the two most popular places that we wanted to see. I highly recommend that you do the same. Also, I recommend that you look at visiting during the down season. This is the busiest I've ever seen Rome and the crowds were just crazy. Now we visited Rome the last week of May 2022. Also find a place to eat by 6.30 in the evenings because around 7, the tables at all the places that we were dining at quickly filled up. 
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, share, and comment to help tell YouTube to share this video with others. Our next stop will be Venice.